Uh, Tyler, what are you doing with my golf clubs? Don't ask questions. All right, guys, I'm here at YZ Country Club with my good friend Tyler Grove, and we're uh, doing a little custom club building right now, putting on some custom ferrules for my golf clubs, little uh, Minnesota Vikings colors. So, Tyler, say what's up. What's up, guys? Great to see you again. Haven't seen you since uh, we had some fun and some mini golf, taking some frowny faces on a couple holes. Yep. That was tough. Yeah, you guys remember Tyler from Pop Stroke, so here he is, doing his magic. Welcome to YZ Country Club. This is my build shop. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but she gets the job done. Uh, right now, I'm just putting some tape on the shafts, just so we can uh, make sure they get back into the right club. So we'll put them on all of them, label them four iron down to wedge, and then basically just uh, instead of trying to guess which one we're going into, it just makes everything nice and smooth, nice and easy. Some of that prep work that you never really think of, but it makes the final job much smoother. So after we get this done, we will swing weight these to make sure that they are proper and go in a nice order. And then we'll rip them apart and put some fun ferrules on there, thanks to <laughs> BB and Efco. Uh, but to start, we're just gonna go swing weight just to make sure that he doesn't have anything that's crazy one way or the other, because we can make that adjustment when we're ripping heads off. And that one is 2.8. So is it normal that all these golf clubs are a little different? A little bit different, yeah. So ideally, when we're talking swing weight, all it is is the balance of the club. So the balance of the grip to the shaft to the head and all the components built in. So it's not a static measurement. Per se, it's not a static weight. It's just a balance point, in fact, where the balance is. D2 is very standard with player's irons. Some people like them heavier. I play mine at D4. I just like heavier irons. Always have them that way. I like them that way. All right, so here's where we start to find discrepancies. So Dylan's six iron is D1.8. 6, 1.7, I can't quite decide. We're gonna go 1.7. So when we're building these, we're gonna build that up to about D 2.6. We're gonna add some weight to that. Do you hit your long irons or your short irons better? Um, gotta be my short irons. Short irons. So what we're actually gonna do then is go the other way with your long irons. We're gonna make them just a touch lighter. Okay. So we'll bring everything down to right around that D2. Your four iron is actually probably good then. A discrepancy of 0.3. If you can feel that, your name is Mr. Tiger Woods. <laughs> Alright kids, now we get to play with fire. Everyone likes playing with fire. We're just heating up some epoxy just so it pops off. And when you're doing this with steel, you can torch it pretty good. It's when uh, when you're doing graphite, you gotta be much, much carefuler, just because you don't want to burn the graphite. Squared it on me a little bit. <laughs> Just like that, we have many pieces now. So one of the things that you might have noticed if when you're watching this, see if we can find a really dirty one. There's still a lot of epoxy in there. And there's a lot of gunk. So if we just glue the shaft in there again, it's not gonna do so hot. So now we gotta clean them all out. And we gotta bore them out. So some of the greatest tools you can have in the, uh, in the build shop, air compressor and a drill. So here we just got a wire brush. We're just gonna go through, clean out all the heads. Goodbye, old feral. Goodbye. Now, this isn't the exciting part, guys, but you know, you just gotta. 
Oop. Sometimes they like to come off in pieces, sometimes they like to come off easily. It's all good, so we got a sander for. Alright guys, we got closest thing to raw shafts is what what we need for this build. There's some uh, you know you can see some build up and some gunk on them. Okay, we've got a belt sander here. That'll take care of all that. The reason we do this is the same reason we bore out the clear out the heads. Can't have a dirty shaft going in a clean club. It's not gonna stick. No dirty shafts. No dirty shafts. We can't forget we don't want to get our clothes dirty. So we've got our nice aprons. We also have red if you're you know you're feeling flashy. This is the Sunday one only. Good, clean, fun. So now we have our tips are prepped on our shafts. Our heads are prepped sitting over there. So now we're just gonna go through a quick dry fitting process. Just make sure that uh, everything fits right. We were talking earlier about some swing weight stuff. You can see right there, little gold piece. And that's actually a brass plug, which is how you swing weight a club. One of the, one of the couple ways. So on an iron, this will just add, depending on how big it is, it's two, four, six, eight, ten 10 grams. Uh, on a couple of the clubs that were a little bit heavy for Dylan, we are actually gonna take that out, probably put in a lighter one, if we even need one. This is why we put the club on the, on the shaft, we write it on there, because otherwise, uh, trying to figure out which one was the seven, eight, nine iron shaft would, yeah, we'd be here all day. Dylan's got a tea time at 2.30, he would not be making that tea time. All right, so I've known Tyler since like way back in the college days at Stout. So I know he knows a lot about golf clubs, but tell the people a little bit like, where do you learn all this kind of stuff? So I got really interested in club building and this kind of aspect of golf when I was in high school. So I started out doing, you know, basic stuff, grips, length changes, you know, just chopping shafts down, adding some extensions, nothing funky, nothing crazy. Then halfway through my college career, I met uh, the owners and the guys at Second Swing. Uh, here in Minnesota and they have a custom build shop and they're like hey do you want to come build clubs for us I'm like absolutely that sounds like a blast and knowing the basics I just went in like pretty blind but now we're here and uh, the guys over there taught me a lot a lot of YouTube videos a lot of trial and error is honestly how I learned most of this stuff and got to thank Robert Wrights at Second Swing he's their master builder over there and uh, honestly I won't be doing all this without without his help you know, and it just kind of is snowballed into full-on custom builds. Yeah. So. Cool. Yeah. Guy's a wizard. All right, guys. So we got uh, these old weights pulled up so we can get these swing weighted properly. Uh, we'll start with the 8-iron here. So just stock. Had it with the other one was uh, 1.4. We're gonna go just a touch heavier, but uh, let's just see where we're at statically with nothing. And see, that's where things can go wrong. That's at C9. That's uh, pretty good for a senior golfer or a small golfer, Craig Joy. But uh, when you actually have some size to you, that makes it a little bit tougher to golf. So let's uh, let's add some weight back in. <laughs> Sorry, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> and there we go. Coming in at uh, 1.9, so right in that uh, 1.5 plus to D2 range, right where Dylan was uh, was looking for. So now we're to the point where swing weighted, all everything's cleaned up, we're good to go. They're just dry fitted right there. So Dylan, being the foolish man that he is, is a Vikings fan. I'm a Packers fan. Dylan went with the uh, little Vikings colors here, uh, gold, silver. A little bit of purple. Oh yeah. So if you've never seen stuff like this before, BB and Fco, uh, great company, top of the line ferrules. Um, it's one of those things you'd never think of. Most of them are just black, but uh, it's easy way to add a little personality to your clubs. I have mine as well. Of course, I want a little bit crazier. Mine are pastel. Having a good good little Easter Easter time there. But Dylan went with the uh, the purple. Hopefully we'll get some uh, Packers green on Craig's here pretty soon. Had to represent my team, a little purple and gold. That's why I wore this today too, so 
Let's go Vikes. Now that we're all ready to go once again, uh, normally I would recommend, since we're doing 10 clubs, I'd recommend 24 hour epoxy, just because it gives you about 45 minutes before it even sets. Unfortunately, Dylan has a tea time today at 2.30 and uh, it's about 9.15 in the morning. So we don't have 24 hours to wait. So we're going with some quicker set epoxy. Works just as well if you're doing one or two clubs. It works fine and if you're in a crunch, if you have the time, use the uh, use the 24 hour but not to fear so we have our epoxy gun and this is kind of a heated topic in the club building world some people use glass shafting beads some people don't uh, I was taught to use them so I use them I believe it helps the epoxy bond a little bit better together it gives it something to uh, grab a hold of more than just itself in the club and uh, makes for just a little bit of a tighter fit looks like clumpy sand it's actually powdered glass oh. so don't eat it <laughs> all right guys so since i said we're using the quick set we're going to be doing like three clubs at a time so bam 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 throw the epoxy away make some new stuff bam 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 and so on Make sure guys when you're mixing epoxy, you give it a good mix. Uh, Undermixed epoxy will not set properly and then your club head will fall off. And that's embarrassing. As a builder, I pride myself in my work. I like, I'm a perfectionist when it comes to this kind of stuff. So I like all my stuff to be perfect. Knock on wood, have not had a club head fall off. So here we go. All we're doing here is just rolling a touch of epoxy on the shaft. One, it'll help the ferrule slide on a little better. And two, it'll help the ferrule stick. So now that we got our ferrule on, we're just going to take the club and tap her down. Just like that. So that's how deep the club goes. Throw on some epoxy. We don't need too much. Just enough to coat it, otherwise we don't want to make a huge mess. Spin it going down the shaft. Get some of the air bubbles out. You can see we're popping air bubbles still as it's popping up on its own. Give it a spin. And when I'm spinning it, guys, I'm just making sure that uh, the epoxy gets on the whole surface area in there to get a good, good, strong bond. And if you get a little epoxy on the outside, it's all right. You got to turn the ferrules down when we're done anyways. That'll clean everything up nicely. Getting some custom ferrules on the golf clubs right now. Shout out BB and FCO. Tons of customizable ferrules for your golf clubs. Adds a little personality to your golf bag. A lot of fun. For me, I chose the Vikings. Skull baby. All right guys, final process here. Uh, built, dried. You can see there's a little touch of epoxy on the outside. That's all right, we'll clean it up here. Uh, and when it comes to ferrules, they don't always uh, flush up perfectly with the hosel. So we have to what's called turn down the ferrules. Uh, here, uh, same sander as before, but you can see the belt is now blue. It is a felt, uh, felt belt for turning ferrules. So it's very, very fine, but uh, we still don't want to dig into it. It will chop the ferrule up. This is where you can tell if a club builder is worth anything is, uh, is their de attention to detail on the ferrule. So here we go. We'll do one just to show you. Nice and flush. Oh yeah, just good to go. Perfect. All right, let's go down the line.
Look at that. Done. All right, that's a wrap, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Tyler's the man. He hooked it up today with the ferals. Got my clubs all right, looking good. Yeah, so hopefully it you. was uh, informational and have some fun. If, uh, if you're in the Minnesota area and you want some, Tyler's your guy. Let me know. Tyler's let your guy. Thank you, Tyler. Appreciate it. No, not a problem. Oh, can we do that? Elbows. That's better. That's what we've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> If you guys like that video, hit the thumbs up there. Make sure you subscribe. We're playing a bunch of golf all month long for the Great Minnesota Golf Together. Tyler's gonna be joining me here in the next video. We're going out to Edinburgh. Let's do it. Let's do it.